So today's talk is going to be about UFOs. No, it's not going to be about UFOs, but it's related. Uh, it's about Scully, and it's about everything that you should know about Scully. So, but before we start, let's clear out some clouds on the name of the project. Where did the name Scully come from? Well, the project was started by the company called Hero Devs. Uh, Hero Devs is a developer consultancy firm from Utah, USA. They are also the organizing company behind NG Conf, which is the main Angular conference in the USA. And for this project, they needed the name of a hero for, for the project. So, and that's because they are Hero Devs. And they quickly came at Agent Scully, who is the female protagonist in the X-Files. And uh, she was quickly embraced as the hero. And also X-Files, static files, uh, it, it kind of relates. Uh, and by the way, finding a good name these days that has an unused domain name is also a very big challenge. So who am I? I'm a freelance software engineer. I, last year, I also became a father. I'm happily together with my partner, Zoe. I'm the organizer of NGBE, which is the Belgian Angular Conference and the Angular Belgian Meta Group. And last week, so very recently, I became a GDE for Angular. If you want to find out more about me, you can always visit my website. So what's Scully and what, you, what should you know about it? As we have only 45 minutes to explain a lot of concepts, you might end up with some questions. So I will be happy to answer those questions right after the presentation. Let's start with a quick overview. Scully is a static site generator for Angular. And it has the potential to become a static site generator for any website or web application using any other framework, so not just only Angular. Its configuration is easy and it's becoming well documented. It allows for automated route discovery of the pages that will need to be pre rendered of your application, including all static routes that get discovered by using guest parser and all dynamic routes that get discovered by plugin configuration and custom router plugins. I will tell you a lot more about that later. This is all possible because of its plugin system that allows us to hook into the Scully processes and do awesome stuff. Scully also supports a way to do optimized client site navigation by storing the relevant data per page in a static JSON file. So a static site generator, what is that? To quickly explain it, I will highlight the most important difference between content served as a typical dynamic web page, what we have been basically doing for almost 30 years already, and content served by a static site generator. The dynamic web page can be a front end or a server side dynamic web page. For example, Angular, Vue, React on the front end, or PHP, ASP.NET, or Node.js, or any other uh, server side framework that you prefer. They both use data and HTML templates. And the process of generating the page is the same. The difference is, is that a typical web page, a dynamic web page, will generate the result HTML page at runtime. So on request by the user, by combining the data with the template. A static site generator is only an extension, an extension or an alternative of that process, where the pages are generated at build time, so in advance as opposed to rendering them at runtime on request of the user. With the dynamic approach, the user always gets the latest version of the page. But this is typically slower um, because the server needs to fetch the data, process the HTML templates, and return it to the browser. With a static site generator, the pages are already generated, and the server only needs to return that page. So it only needs to return that page. This means that time to first byte is potentially much faster than with a dynamic approach. If you want to read more about static site genera generation, uh, you can find a lot on the internet. And I've also linked a very good article on the Netlify blog. So Scully. Scully is the static site generator for Angular. And how does it work? Well, first. We need to build our Angular application, preferably by using the production flag for an optimized build. We get a lot of output, uh, the bundles and the static assets and the index of the HTML. Then as soon as we run Scully using npm run Scully, the route discovery process will start. This process will generate a full list of the two pre-rendered pages and output it as an easy to read and understandable JSON file. 
Next, Scully will fire up a static web server for the static assets of the Angular production build. We need this because our application has to be available during the process. Now, Scully will pre-render all the pages it has collected before and output them as static uh, HTML pages on your file system. And that's basically, it. it looks pretty simple, right? But there's a lot of, there's quite a lot of well-thought magic happening behind the screen. Let's take a deeper look. So to configure Scully on our Angular CLI project, we can use the ng add command. More specifically, ng add at Scully IO slash init. This will generate all the files and additions, additions to the code for us in our project. The base of a Scully project is its config file. A config file is straightforward and easy to start with. It allows for project direct reconfiguration, like the name of the project, the source location, and where to output the static, uh, statically rendered pages. Configuration of the rendering process can be done per route or in general for all the discovered routes. We can hook into all the Scully processes by defining our own custom plugins. So next, the route discovery process is an essential part of Scully. This is where it begins. Because before we can pre-render our pages, we need to know which pages we have to pre-render. That's obvious. So we can make a clear distinction between two types of routes, the static routes and the dynamic routes. Static routes are typically pages that do not have a dynamic part in their URL. For example, the about page or contact page, those pages will always be those pages and their URL will not change. And the same is true for overview pages like news or users, their route will always be the same. Scully can discover those routes based on the Angular routing configuration. The routes are auto extracted using the guest parser library, which is included in Scully. Opposed to that, we have dynamic routes, and those routes typically have an identifier in their path that can be used to look up the correct data in the database. To make these pages discoverable, we need to teach Scully how to discover them. So we do this by defining the routes in the Scully config file, and we build custom router plugins to feed the data to Scully. So mentioned a lot already about the plugin system, uh, and it's basically the plugin system that allows us to define and configure all the new ways and strategies that we can use to pre-render our pages. You can teach Scully how to generate all the dynamic URLs, for, even for your most exotic routing configurations using the router plugins. <coughs> it's possible to extend Scully and to instruct it how to process the generated output and do extra transformations, like for example, minify the HTML by our render plugins. Scully is also capable of handling any input source or type for the dynamic content. Think plain comma separated value files, markdown, or any other text format. If you know how to parse it, or you have software or a library that can transfer it, transform it into HTML, Scully can handle it for you via file handler, file handler plugins. I like to refer to these plugins as content plugins, as they help us with discovering the content and processing it. The other two types, route discovery done and all done, uh, are helper plugins that we will discuss briefly at the end of the presentation. Let's deep dive into the possibilities of the plugins. So router plugins are used to instruct Scully how to handle dynamic router parameters in a specific router configuration. They can be used to fetch the data required to expand those router parameters and generate a full list of possible URLs. Typical examples are a blog or a news detail page or a user detail page. You can probably think of your own specific router configuration that relates to this. Let's take a look at a basic example of a router plugin. The full list of routes for the dynamic route slash users slash ID can be generated using the Scully built-in uh, JSON router plugin. The dynamic property ID will be expanded using the data that is returned by a JSON source and a specific value from the objects in that data source. The only thing that we need to do is configure the route in our Scully config file. And for this, we define the type and how to expand the property ID. This will return a list of all users that are available via their own dynamic URL. 
So if this works for a very simple uh, router configuration, but let's say that we have a more exotic or complex route, like for example, slash new slash ID slash slug. For this, we can define our own custom Scully router plugin. Let's, sorry about the dog. Let's briefly see how to define such a plugin. The plugin is in essence, just a function that takes the route declaration and its configuration. As you can see in step one, we fetch the required data that we will, that we will use to create a list of routes. Using a convenience route split method of Scully, we get back a helper method called create path that we can use with the data to format all the routes. Finally, the function returns the list of the routes that we need to handle. Before we can use this custom plugin, we need to register it with Scully. We do this by using the register plugin method and by defining its type, identifier and plugin function. We export the identifier for reference and to use it in the Scully config file. So the last step we need to do is before we can use this custom plugin is we need to import it. And we do this by importing the news constant or reference that we exported from the plugin file. Importing this constant, sorry, importing this constant will execute the code in the plugin and the plugin will get registered. And next we associate the news plugin with the configured dynamic route. As we saw from the implementation of the plugin, the only configuration our plugin needs is the URL or the data source uh, where to re retrieve the news data from. So now our customer, uh, our custom router plugin is now configurable, is now configured and usable. And we will see it in action at the demo at the end of this presentation. The next important type of plugin is the render plugin. We can use these plugins to execute additional post rendering processes. In more clear language, this means that we can transform the HTML output that comes from pre-rendering our pages. For example, we can inject uh, additional third-party scripts like Hotjar or Google Analytics or specific per page configurations for those scripts. We can minify the HTML, which will even optimize our page even more, or we can create extra dynamic content based on the original content to enhance our pages. Like for example, it generate a table of contents of the page. To show this, uh, we will create a very simple custom renderer plugin. And as I said before, this will allow us to execute our own post-processing logic on this HTML output. The example of render plugin will just simply add a banner to all the pages that are generated. And for this, we define, first we define a function that takes the generated HTML and adds a paragraph to the top of the page. We register the plugin with the correct render type as we did before with the custom router plugin, its identifier and the render function itself. Exporting the identifier makes it available in the config, Scully config file, just as we did the same thing as, uh, as with the router plugin. Configuring this plugin is very similar to configuring a router plugin. We first import the identifier, uh, which means it will also execute the register plugin. And we configure the, dem uh, the demo banner identifier as a default post renderer function, meaning it will execute for all the discovered routes. And this simple plugin uh, requires no extra configuration. So our, our render plugin is now configured and usable. Same here, we will see it in action at the demo at the end of this presentation. The third notable plugin type is the file handler plugin. These plugins are used by the internal Scully content folder, content folder plugin, and they define how to read specific files and transform them into HTML. There are two built-in file handler plugins. Uh, one is the Markdown file handler plugin and the ASCII code file handler plugin. If you have any other type of file and you have the logic to transform its contents into HTML, you can easily define your own. I already gave the example. You can, you can uh, process uh, comma separated value files, transform it into a HTML data table. That is a perfect example. 
Also, the homepage of Scully is a perfect example of how to generate a static Angular website using Scully and Markdown files. On the left, you can see the, uh, the output, and on the right, you can see the original Markdown files on GitHub. There are two other plugins available. I haven't used them myself yet, but they can have some potential for your specific project. Uh, the first one is the route discovery done type. Uh, plugins of this type are executed after all the routes have been collected and all router plugins have been handled. Every plugin of, the, every plugin of this type receives a shallow copy of the array containing all the, the routes that will need to be processed. And the, those routes are collected, collected during the discovery process. So plugins of this type can typically be used to uh, calculate statistics, uh, generate a sitemap, or update your RSS feed, and any other thing you can come up with, of course. The second one is the all done plugin type. And these type of plugins are called when all Scully processes and plugins have finished uh, running. Plugin of, plugins of this type can be used to do some final processing, like for example, cleaning up uh, temporary files. You can do anything that should happen at the end of the process with these plugins. Then another, uh, well, very amazing topic actually is um, the optimizing of client-side navigation. And apparently this is something very, very typical in the Jamstack uh, approach. Um, I'm not gonna go too deep into Jam Jamstack, but uh, it's very interesting. Uh, if you want to learn more, Google it. <laughs> but uh, for now, I'm just gonna explain how to optimize client-side navigation. And what does this mean? Well, as soon as the page your statically generated page is loaded, Angular gets bootstrapped in the browser. Oh. So any navigation you do afterwards in the app is potentially a client-side navigation with Angular that is handling the routing. Scully is capable of collecting all the dynamic data that was loaded via HTTP during uh, the process of generating that page. So that data is saved in a static asset file, data.json, uh, as a sibling to the index.html page for that specific wrap. So when we navigate client-side, the application loads the data from that data file instead of quer uh, querying or hitting the, the different sort of APIs again, which can be slow. So, do I still need to explain that this can be super fast? Because instead of getting data from the different dynamic endpoints that could be slow, that could contain uh, slow database reads, for example, we just read from one static JSON file that is also hosted just as the index.html file. So super fast. I will show you that in the demo as well. Then a very, uh, controversial, but no, perhaps a difficult topic is that um, you might already have heard about Angular Universal, and in essence, it can do the same as Scully, uh, but there are differences. So let's see. And the short version about that difference is that Scully uses Puppeteer to render the Angular application, and Universal uses GS DOM, which is a very fast Node.js implementation of the browser's document object model. Let's go briefly over the rendering process of Universal and Scully to explain how it works. Please try to follow along. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me afterwards. With Angular Universal, we can do server-side rendering and pre-rendering. So in case of server-side rendering, it's a browser requesting the server to render a page. In the case of pre-rendering, it's a script requesting another script to pre-render all the possible pages. But in essence, the process, it's the same. The browser makes a request to the server for a page. In this particular example, it's news one slug. Our Node.js server identifies these requests as navigation requests and passes the request to the Angular universal application that gets bootstrapped on the server. The Angular app builds up the components and pages like it would normally do in the browser. And meanwhile, Zone.js and Angular are keeping track of the stability of the application. Async operations, like for example, HTTP calls and timeouts are what make the application unstable. So as soon as all those operations are done and the zone becomes stable, 
our Angular app is informed and also becomes stable. We can now generate or serialize the HTML using GS DOM, which is a node document object model uh, implementation. And our Angular universal setup returns the full HTML to the Node.js server, which returns it to the client. I hope you were able to follow, but I will continue with Scully. So in the case of Scully, the process is different, but again, it's actually is the same in its essence uh, if we compare it to universal. And before running Scully, you need to do a production build of your application. In the most typical case, you will do this using the production flag. So the same is true for universal, by the way, but the only difference is, is that the CLI commands that you use to uh, pre-render an application using universal will build the, will do the production build for you. So next we can start up Scully by running npm run Scully. And this script is automatically injected in your package.json when you run the ng add Scully in its schematic. So the Scully process first generates the list of routes. This list can be based on dynamic data, depending on the configured routes, as we have seen, as we have seen before. So this means that the required data needs to be available while, while you are generating the routes. And this data is most probably the same data that you used for generating the content on those routes. So the application or server that provides this data also needs to be running and be accessible to the process. So again, the same here for universal. Uh, Universal needs to know which routes to pre-render, so an extra script is needed in case of pre-rendering. The application needs to be running to be able to pre-render it. So Scully starts a, a static web server for your production build. Next, Scully will start a pool of instances of Puppeteer. And this is typically, uh, the amount of instances is typically uh, the cores that you have available uh, on the system. And these shared instances of, of Tier, the headless browser, will be used to generate all the pages in parallel. Scully will start visiting all the routes that it discovered and saved in the list of routes. The next steps are executed for all those routes. Scully instructs Puppeteer to load that specific page. So in this case, the news slash one slash my slug page. The Angular app bootstraps in the headless browser and the navigation to the specific route is executed. After the first navigation, and by checking the router events, uh, Scully monitors the stability of the application and sends the Angular ready event. Scully now knows that it can safely instruct Puppeteer to serialize and save the full HTML of the page to the file system. After processing all the pages, the script is done. So let's compare some good and less good points about Scully and Universal. The good parts about Scully is that it allows for easy configuration. It has an extendable plugin system. You can use nearly all JavaScript plugins that are available uh, on the internet in your application and Scully will be able to handle them. Scully is also loosely coupled from your project. It's not even uh, imported or referenced in the angular.json file. This also means that you can easily integrate and set it up for any existing project. You don't even need to use the Angular CLI. It uses a super efficient transfer state to optimize uh, client-side navigations. On the other side, with Universal, Universal can be very fast. It will be very reliable because it uses a super fast implementation of the DOM on a Node.js level. It's available directly via the Angular CLI and it's using the official Angular supported builders. It allows for pre-rendering or static site generation and for server-side rendering. The less good part of Scully is that supporting all this goodness and because of using Puppeteer, it can be slow when you are generating and pre-rendering a lot of pages. So depending on the size of your application and the amount and the magnitude of your pages, this might be an important factor. Scully does not allow for server-side rendering. So an update to the data requires a, a new pre-rendering of the pages. The less good parts about Universal is that Universal is always tightly coupled to a specific project. Universal also requires a high discipline 
uh, of, of strict coding uh, principles. You need to be very careful with how you code your application. For example, you can't use a window navigator or document global uh, objects directly. And you need to use dependency injection to, to make that work uh, as you would expect it. It can be hard to retrofit universal in an existing application. And although its transfer state is good for the initial page load, it is less efficient for client side navigations. So enough with the high level talking, uh, theory, is, theory is fine, but let's show a real uh, code example in action. <laughs> So to show the demo, I will first uh, run the application uh, just as a normal Angular application by uh, just serving it as we would normally do with, a, with an application um, in the browser. So localhost. So this is the example application. It's a very simple uh, application that has a few routes, like for example, the home route, a news overview, a news article overview with an implement implementation of the news detail where we show an author. And we also link to the detail page of that author. The detail page of the author will highlight its bio and will show the, the articles that the author has written. We also have an overview of the users. So this is, this is client-side rendering. So the, the rendering of the application will happen in the browser. But with Scully, we will pre-render it. Uh, so we get the full HTML back from the server. And to do that, we will run the Scully process. Let's first see quickly how the application is implemented. So very basic uh, scaffolded uh, Angular application with a very basic router configuration. Uh, the empty part uh, shows the home component and then we have two lazy loaded modules, the news and the users module. The news module is implemented with uh, an overview component and an ID which shows the detail component and the user, the same thing an overview component and a more complex or exotic uh, router configuration for the, the detail view of the user. Okay, so now we will do a production build. And we will run the most basic setup of our sculling configuration. So for our project, this is the, the bare minimum that we that we need. We need to define the, the project name. We need to uh, define where the output of our generation process will be put it and the project root of the application. To run it, we just do npm run scully and we give it the config file which is uh, at scully slash scully dot one dot config. Sam, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm not sure whether you're showing the right screen. I think you're typing, but we're just seeing a browser. Ah, okay. That's good that you mentioned that because I was showing the code. So I'll switch to, switch to WebStorm. That's Can you now see WebStorm? We can see the code now. Thank you. Ah, yeah. Okay. So I need to remember that I'm sharing an application and not the window. Okay. So quickly we'll go through the code again. So typically Angular uh, project in an annex pro in an annex setup. Um, we have a home component as we have seen in the browser application, and we have two lazy loaded uh, modules: the news module and the user module. The user module has a very basic uh, configuration using a more exotic uh, route configuration for the detail component using a parameter ID and a parameter slug. 
and an overview component. And the same is true for the news module, which is more typically just an idea. All right. So to run Scully with the basic setup, we need, this is the bare minimum that we need for uh, the configuration. We need the project name, the, out, uh, the output directory and the project root of the application. And to run this, we first run a production build and now we will use npm run Scully with the config file to generate this Scully statically site, statically generated website. So, as you could have seen here, is that um, bum, bum, bum. I saw something here. No configuration for routes. Uh, that's normal. We will tackle that later. But Scully used the uh, guest parser plugin to, to auto discover all the static routes in our application. So if we go to the output folder, we will see that um, the index.html page, so the home page, and the users overview page and news overview page are generated. So if we execute and serve this statically, I think it's best, Fernand, if I uh, share my screen instead of uh, the application. So desktop one, like this. Are you still seeing the web storm? Yeah, cool. So if I would now switch to uh, the application. So this is the client side rendered, which is not running anymore now. Um, we should visit the so the, the statically generated, uh, the static, <laughs> the static version that is served. Um, so you can see this is coming back with the full HTML from the server, and it's still working because as soon as the application hits the browser, um, Angular is kicking in and it's bootstrapping as a normal uh, Angular application. So what you're seeing here now is client-side navigation. And we can show you this by uh, checking the network. So if you move to news detail, and it's not working, why? Because, let's see. Oh. Yes, this was expected because uh, it, it's the basic config. We did not define a route configuration on how to handle the uh, the user detail and the news detail pages. So this is totally expected. Only the overview and the static pages are generated. So we need more configuration uh, to instruct Scully how to generate those uh, detail pages. And we do that by extending the configuration and defining some custom uh, router plugins. So for the news ID route, we defined a news router plugin, and for the users, we defined a uh, users route plugin. This is essentially the, 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 sa the same thing that I've shown in the demo. Um, so I'm not gonna explain that in detail anymore. It's just gonna use the configuration uh, URL that we see here to load the data that will get, uh, that will be used to expand the news slash ID route configuration into all the possible routes that we have in the data. So let's do that. This is a very important part because I'm using localhost 4200, which means that that's the, 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 the application that I'm pre-rendering. So I need to serve it. I need to be able to, to load that file. So I will, serve the application. And now I will do an npm run scully with a config file of dot scully. Scully dot two dot config dot yes. First check if my server is running, yes. 
Now you will see that the process will take a little bit longer because it will have to visit around 120 pages or 110 pages. So the process is done. And as we can see here, um, we had around 130 pages. If we go check out the, the dist, we will now see that for every page, we have a statically generated index.html. If we serve this, if we serve this statically, we go back to the browser. We will now see that the data is there. Doing a hard refresh now. So this page is now loaded as an index.html file with the Angular build. So as soon as it hits the browser, it's again a normal Angular application. All right. So that was the example of router plugins. If we go back to WebStorm, um, I've shown the demo, the, the demo banner uh, render plugin. So I also created that one here and I'm linking it to the default post renderers by importing it. So to quickly show you again, the only thing that it does with some extra configuration, which I will explain later is it replaces the app root and prefixes it with the, uh, with the demo banner message. To do that, we just run the new config. We serve statically generated files. Now we will see that we have a new banner. So what, what Scully does here is it first generates all the page, the, the, the complete page. And then for every page, it adds this, H, uh, this small HTML part. So the next uh, example is an extension of this demo banner. And it's an example on how to set the plug, a plugin configuration for a plugin. And for this, I've extended the Scully demo banner plugin a little bit to accept uh, an optional configuration. So we check if there is a, a plugin configuration for the demo banner. And if there is a message on that plugin config, we use that message instead of the pre-rendered page. So as we have seen in scully4.config.js, we see that we set the plugin for the demo banner and we change the message to high ng Leipzig. So we need to re-execute the Scully process with a new config file. We serve it statically, go back to the browser, and how the message has changed. So this is a very basic example of how you can make your plugins configurable. Okay, so last part of this demo is um, highlighting a bit the uh, optimized client site navigation. So as I mentioned before, our our Angular application is retrieving data in its components. For example, if we check the, uh, let's take a look here. If we check the, the user detail, we see that we have the bio of the user and the articles written by the user. And to show this data, uh, we, so detail, we query different, uh, different resources. So one is the assets user detail.json and the other is the assets news.json. Scully optimizes this. Scully uses uh, 
um, serializes both sources in a single data.json uh, source. So let me execute this configuration again. That was not needed, but okay. Um, let's wait a bit. And now uh, we'll show the local host 4000 first. So when we load, uh, for example, uh, let's load the users. So when we navigate from the, the user overview to a detailed page of a user, you will see that we uh, get two JSON files. So this is fast now because it's locally hosted and, and there's no, uh, no busy API that needs to, to, to return this, this result to me. Um, but can be potentially slow. And now we're only getting like two files uh, or two, we're only querying two APIs, but this can easily become very slow if you're, if you're getting more data. So what Scully does is, if we do the same with the static generated page, it, it loads the same data, but it loads it from the data.json file. So both the, the data of both files is now in that one data.json file. And this data.json file gets deployed next to the index.html of this page. All right. Back to the demo, uh, back to the presentation. So, so you probably noticed that the power of Scully lies within its uh, plugin system. So eventually, eventually it will be the community uh, that can make this tool grow a lot. And a growing set of community plugins is becoming available and you can find and list yours at the recommended plugin page on the Scully website. If you create a plugin, it's advisable to use the Scully plugin prefix for naming your plugin. This will make it easy discoverable and it will help creating a uniform naming of the Scully plugins. The following selection of plugins uh, are already available and their naming should be enough to understand what they are doing. But for example, the disable Angular plugin might seem a bit weird. How could we disable Angular? Uh, let's, so let's try out the first two of them. We will implement the minify HTML and the disable Angular render plugins. So demo part two. is only one uh, Scully config file. But for this, I have installed the minify HTML plugin and the disable Angular plugin. Both plugins are uh, renderer plugins. So we need to uh, attach them to the default post renderers or the, the post renderers uh, option to make them execute only specifically for one route configuration. For example, for all routes that get generated, the demo banner and the minify HTML render plugin will get executed, but only for the user's ID slug uh, route configuration, we will execute demo banner, disable Angular, and minify HTML. So let's do that. That was six. Still running, yes, okay. A little bit more detail on the Disable Angular plugin. Um, this might indeed sound a little bit weird, but we're not actually disabling Angular. We're only um, removing the loading of Angular in the browser. So we're still using Angular to build our application, but as we are pre-rendering our the full HTML of our page, there, there could be use cases where you don't need to bootstrap, bootstrap Angular again in the browser because the page is already fully there. Um, serve the results. 
browser, localhost. So we execute the demo banner and minify HTML for all for all the pages, and only disable Angular and all the rest for uh, the user uh, pages. So if we see the source code, we will see that the HTML is now completely minified. This is the same for all of the pages. Complete page is minified. And the demo banner is still there, of course, which was also the post, uh, post renderer plugin. But now the disable Angular plugin, uh, how can I show that difference? Well, if you load the home page, you will see that all the bundles get uh, loaded as well. So as soon as the page hits the browser, it's again an Angular application. So meaning that we, if we navigate, it's Angular doing the navigation. In the case of the user detail page, when we refresh that page, we will see that there is no Angular involved here. We got the full page and it's fully functional. We did not need Angular for this. So if you're not doing very exotic things, like for example, um, handling a form on a page or uh, doing other like a canvas drawing and stuff like that, it might be worth it investigating if you can remove Angular from the browser side because it's still fully functional. If I now click on news detail, I will do a full navigation to the news detail page where I load Angular again. And from now on, it's again an Angular application. All right. To the demo. Where's my demo? Oh, where's my uh, presentation? Sorry. It's hidden. This. So to conclude, Scully is a great tool that is still evolving and it did not even officially release its first, first version yet. So it's kind of still in a developer preview, but it's definitely ready to use. Uh, we might just expect some smaller um, and bigger updates in the future before they officially release. A big part of its flexibility is the plugin system because it allows you to define custom ways of discovering your application routes you can do post rendering and transformations on the output HTML, and you can process different kinds of text formats. Using post processing hooks like the all done plugin types, you can do uh, additional cleanup or any additional other work. It's fundamentally different from Angular, Angular Universal, but in its core, in its essence, it, there are very much uh, like, likely. They're very much likely to each other. So both have their use cases, but Universal can be much faster. On the contrary, Scully can support much more applications. And Scully has a faster client-side navigation. You can use the community plugins. And if you feel like sharing your own, please feel, do, uh, please feel so free to do it because it can be useful for others. If you want to do more reading about Scully, you can find, of course, the official documentation on their website, on their GitHub uh, repository and organization. Also, uh, the example app that I've used is available on GitHub via this link. And basically everything that I told you today, uh, I wrote down in articles. So if you want more detail about specific stuff, you can uh, check out the four articles that I've written about Scully. So thank you for your attention. If you have questions, feel free to contact me afterwards at my email or directly on Twitter. So 
Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Wow, yeah. what an applause. Yeah, and that's your applause. Thank you, Sam, for this awesome talk.